Four. Three. Oh, she four. You guys four. can't hope for bigger. You're gonna just get your Ooh. dreams crushed. <laughs> Olive is ready to deliver any day now, and guys, she's huge. Like, I mean, huge. Back when we did the ultrasound, we saw three little babies, but honestly, we think there could be more. <laughs> So as we get the barn ready and refreshed for her to deliver, and as we gather all the supplies, we are getting excited about baby goats being born on the farm. And although Olive doesn't particularly love babies, I'm sure she's excited to get these babies born too. Okay. All right, so Ethan can kind of hold her there and then let her. Ethan, you have one job. <laughs> Just pet her, oh pet her. Oh my gosh, it's not long enough. <laughs> oh no. Oh goodness. 56. 55 and a half. Oh goodness. That's pretty wide. World record maybe. <laughs> so we're just measuring so that we remember and next year when she's pregnant again we'll be able to compare and see if she's having more or less than she has this year. Okay guys, so we have the final days before she delivers. What are all y'all's guess? Four. Three. Oh, she looks you guys poor. can't hope for bigger. You're gonna just get your Ooh. dreams crushed. <laughs> Lydia and I have been through this, guys. We keep guessing bigger numbers, and then there's less. So look at her udder on whoa, Willow. Nice. Look at her udder already, you guys. That's I know. Four yeah. babies. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. That's a big goat. What do you think, Olive? How many do you think you have? The boys think four and the girls think three. Yeah. She's gonna have three big bucklings, Lydia. No bucklings. <laughs> no more bucklings. Hi, babies. They're getting so big now. Look how big Rose is, Lydia. She's a little doling now. Okay, come in the nursery so you can get used to See if Babies she's and... well. He so okay. So he's a buckling. He's got to go soon. Um, he's actually going today. Yeah. So she's not gonna like him messing with her. Okay. Oh. Okay. Hold on to him. Hold on to him. Leave her alone. You gotta get used to babies. No. <laughs> no, she doesn't like them. Usually they don't like any except their own. Rose is gonna be all tough. Until they have babies, and then they know they like babies. We made sure and shaved Olive's backside and udder so that everything can stay cleaner after she delivers. <laughs> Olive's stall has been ready for a couple weeks because I wondered if she might go a little bit early if we were wrong on the due date, but I don't think so. I think we were right, and I think that she's gonna probably deliver in a couple days. We're only missing one thing from the barn stall, you guys. Do you remember, you know what that the is? Sign. The sign. The sign. You still haven't done the sign yet, Kevin. How is she supposed to know? She's How supposed to she deliver. Oh, that's true. She's not gonna. She won't be birthed in a stall that doesn't have her name on. You better get started on it. So in true Kevin fashion, he did not want to make a new one. So he reused, <laughs> see, so this one is fine because, you know, Luna's not gonna have any more babies. But if Tilly and Olive happen to deliver the same time, oh, yeah. well, <laughs> we'll just have to, you know, have to spin it. figure it out. <laughs> there we go. That's Olive's little stall. And Daphne's not due for a month, but we'll leave it there. All right, we've got all the supplies ready. Where ready. is that cool the graphic? calf puller thing? Oh, it's right there, you're touching it. Never had uh, to use it. Yeah, that is crazy. Hopefully never have to use that. This is my favorite thing. I printed up pictures online of bad positions of babies so I could be reminded what to do because there's a ton of different positions. Yeah. 
that they can be in. I think at this point, if you were to go back and watch all of the kidding videos, we've probably had every bad position possible. I'm up for anything now. Tonight, I'm gonna show you how I whip up a really quick meal with HelloFresh. I like implementing HelloFresh into our meal plans because even though I love to cook from scratch, not every day works out exactly as I have planned. So it helps us stay on track with not going out to eat very often. Having a meal waiting for us in the fridge is a huge encouragement to stay in and whip up a quick dinner. I love that Kevin or the kids can whip these up as well. So not everything has to rely on me. When it comes to the taste, they actually have more five-star reviews than any other meal delivery kit. So you know you're going with the best. And if you have an extra busy week, you can increase your HelloFresh servings so that you can save the leftovers for lunch. Their pre-portioned ingredients means less prep for you and less wasted food. So if you'd like to have some easy to make meals in your fridge, go to hellofresh.com and use code WEEDEM16 for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. The bigger the stick, the better. Rose and Raven have collars on them now because we've been practicing walking them around in the pasture and getting them ready for sort of show training. Sit. Stay. And little Poe is gonna go to his new home today. So in preparation for that, we did their tattoos, which are always fun. You have to tattoo goats if you want them registered. It's just a, almost like a little ear piercing where it pricks their skin and then you put paste on there so that that's recognizable and can be readable, hopefully into adulthood. For those of you that are curious, on their right ear is our herd tattoo, which is W-O-L-2. And then on the left ear is a letter that is designated for last year, which is for 2021, it was the letter N. I know my N looks a lot like an M, but I promise it's an N. And then the number or the birth order that they were born in. So whenever these goats are shown or are taken across state lines, or even if they are linear appraised, these tattoo on their ears will help identify to make sure they are who they say they are. And then they smear it around all day long like war paint. I know. I, I put those little pads on there to like those skin pads yeah. to contain it, but it never really contains it. <laughs> she looks good. So they get the green all over them. A little bit of makeup. But he's a cute little boy. I'm excited for him. He's beautiful. Yeah. Like honestly, I would have loved to keep him, but he's related to too many of our does, yeah. so I don't know. But he's beautiful. Look at him. Yeah, look at that. He's so strong. He's really wide, he's really level, and he's got a really good muscle tone to him, yeah. which now we've realized is a really important thing in bucks because breeding <laughs> takes a lot out of them, so they need to have a lot of muscle tone. Tilly, you did a good job with your babies this year. They're so pretty. You're a good mama. <laughs> and she watches them. Mm-hmm. She never talks back when we talk to her. No. There's nothing in that little head of hers. Yeah. That's okay. I hope you don't mind if I say that I love you. All the way back in July, we planted these common beans. They're like pinto beans, but they're more native to Arizona. So they do great here. We let them grow and then we let them dry throughout the winter. And now it is time to pick them. There is something so satisfying about growing your own beans. I think growing grains is probably the next level. We've done a tiny bit of that 
<laughs> but we at least can grow beans. And since I love beans, it's perfect. What people don't realize about growing your own food is that harvesting and preserving takes the most time. Shelling these beans took a good hour, but it was nice. I sat on the deck, watched the waterfall in the pond, watched the goats, and I mean, it's worth it to have these beautiful beans in the end. I'm gonna make something really great with these beans, something that my family actually eats and likes. But in order to do that, we've gotta start by picking this year's beets. We've got a handful of big ones and a bunch of smaller ones, so we're gonna leave about half of those and pick a few. Beets get a bad rap, you know, and I think it's just because if you've only had them roasted, you haven't really tasted the full flavor that a beet can give you. So today we're gonna pickle some beets, which is basically putting the beets in a mixture of vinegar and sugar. I got this recipe from my aunt and uncle who got it from their old neighbor. <laughs> so this recipe is so old, it requires that you use, and I quote, spring water from the stump, which I don't have, so we're gonna use beet juice instead. So we'll take the smaller beets and we'll juice them. And while the larger beets are boiling and getting tender, we're gonna make the brine. The brine is really simple. We've got brown sugar, vinegar, and the beet juice. Once the beets are tender, I'll peel them, and then slice them, and then fill up our jar. Oh my goodness, these are my favorite. So while those beets soak in that nice and tangy juice, we're gonna get started on cooking the beans. Cooking beans on the stovetop is always just like a guess. It may take 30 minutes, it may take three hours. You just never know. I made sure to soak these beans in water overnight though, so I think they'll do pretty well. When I was a kid, I hated stuff like this. Bean salads, stuff with lots of weird flavors in it, but now as an adult, I love it. So we've got fresh tomatoes in the salad, a sweet Vidalia onion, of course the pickled beets, which I've diced up, and then a bunch of herbs from the garden. We've got parsley, the last of the cilantro before it gets too hot, and some green onions. We'll chop all that up, and finally we'll make the dressing. It's really simple. We've got our oil, our vinegar, cumin, garlic, mustard, and of course, you guys, a couple tablespoons of our honey from the honey bucket. Yes, we still have the honey bucket, and yes, we still have a lot left, but that's the good thing about having a honey bucket because it literally never expires. So we've always got it waiting there for us. <laughs> the freshly cooked beans are poured on top and then we mix this whole thing together and chill it. This is perfection. This is my favorite meal in the world right here. A garden bean salad. It's got such beautiful, bright flavors and that nice tang from the pickled beets. Oh my goodness, I love this so much. If you haven't made this, try it. I promise you will like it. Even my kids like it. Even though they complain about eating beans, they love this salad and we ate it up really fast. He likes it, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Getting irrigation tomorrow, so Salem is so excited because the canal starts filling up. Is that fun? Okay, come on, Bucks. They're too, they're too concerned with the girl. Come on, Bucks. Ready? <laughs> I don't think the Bucks want to play ball. Well, Bucks have done a good job in this fence. They like running back and forth. Yeah, they're doing good with the geese. They go in there. And they say hi, but then they come back. <laughs> yeah, they don't go in the goose house, they just go no, up to it. They just say hi. Hey, the good thing about having this long run is that we can uh, show train them in oh, here. Yeah. Just so we don't have to take them out in the pasture, we can just go back and forth. You can show them how to walk. All right, let's see if, if Napoleon can do a good job. They're already pretty good. <laughs> as long as there's not another buck around. <laughs> Our next plan is to put trees all along here to shade this area in the summer because this tree shades this side, but yeah, this whole side is pretty bare, so it's gonna need a lot of shade in the summer. <laughs> we have a little trick. Yeah, put the grain for the geese in the water and then the goats don't wanna go underwater to eat it, but the geese go underwater that's smart. We've tricked you, Napoleon. Yes. 
She loves irrigation day. Do not give her a bath until she's <laughs> had her fill. Not coming in the house, Salem, until you're all clean. Well, it's pretty much everyone's favorite day. The geese, Salem, and Lydia. Well, the geese love the irrigation so much mm -hmm. that they left their nest to come swim in it. They don't like Salem. Uh oh, watch out Salem. <laughs> Come here. So we've shown a lot in past videos how we flood irrigate our yard. So I won't go over it now, but it's a really cool way for us to have nice green grass and beautiful shade trees here in the desert. It comes straight from a local lake, so it's unfiltered. And I know it doesn't seem like it, but it's a good economical way for us to water our yards. And it's nice because now the geese have a nice little pond for them to swim in every two weeks without going in our beautiful, nice pond. Now the irrigation is all filled up and our only kid that plays in the irrigation is Salem. <laughs> you guys don't even play in it you anymore. Go swim in the irrigation? It's pretty nasty. <laughs> Salem loves it though, huh? Don't you? All right guys, thanks for watching today's video. If you wanna go back, and watch all the other births so you can get excited about all of delivering soon, you can go ahead and click here. Also, we're doing other updates on our Instagram account, so if you wanna head over there, you can watch with us every day and we'll know that she's about to deliver when her udder pops and gets a lot bigger. Until then, hopefully we'll have baby goats this weekend and we'll have a new fun video for you guys next week with a bunch of little babies hopping around.